Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today in this virtual review session for AP 2D Art and Design. My name is Marilyn Proctor Gibbons, and I'm an AP Art and Design teacher at Lincoln High School in Tallahassee, Florida. Before my students left for spring break, uh, they had no idea that they would not be returning for school. However, the last week of our grading period, I did ask each of my students to log into AP Central and set up a an account under the AP and Art and Design Digital Submission web application. Once they did that, they began uploading all of their images that they had scanned in and photographed. And at that point, um, spring break started. And now they're at home and they should be able to access their websites and continue to work on their portfolios. Unfortunately, many of you may not have gotten to this point. So keep in mind, if you have artwork at school, you may be able to contact your art teacher. Matter of fact, I went in today uh, and one of my students contacted me and I delivered her work to the front office and she will be picking it up later. So your teacher might be able to do that for you. They may not be able to. Uh, if they are not, they may be able to photograph or scan your work for you and email it to you. If you don't have either of those options, then it's okay. You will be able to create your own work at home um, with materials that you have or that you may be able to purchase at some point. So it's okay. We will work through this and you've got this. Today, we will discuss um, some of the updated requirements for the AP Art and 2D Design Portfolio, and we'll also look at the core skills and how you will be assessed uh, for this portfolio. You're also going to be going through a little exercise on how to develop your sustained investigation or kind of revamp it and examine what you have. I just want to remind you um, that College Board did update the requirements for the digital portfolio and now you all receive that blue form off to the side to the far uh, right but the information in there is no longer correct. So the portfolio does have two se sections still but you will be submitting only 10 digital images instead of 15. So only 10 digital images instead of 15. And those 15 images, some of them can be details. Some of them can be sketches from your sketchbook. Whatever you need to uh, provide evidence for what you are trying to convey in your portfolio, you can do that as long as there are 10 images in that slot. You are now required to submit only three digital works for the selected work section of the portfolio instead of five. So again, you will have to submit 10 digital images for the sustained investigation and only three images for the selected work section of the portfolio. Also, something that did not change is that you will still have to submit works of art and design, and you will still have to discuss the process doc and document it, and you'll have to write about your work. So that did not change in the portfolio. With any course, it is important to know what is expected of you and how you will be assessed. And with my students, one of the first things that I require them to do is to go to AP Central and we download several important documents that are essential uh, for the AP 2D Design course. Two of those resources are the AP Art and Design course and exam description, which is sometimes referred to as the CED, and the Art and Design Selected Works and Sustained Investigation Rubrics. So those two documents can be found on the website. I know your teachers may know where they are, but you as a student need to know as well because your portfolio is being assessed and you need to know how. Now, uh, let's download these informational documents right now. So I'm going to walk you through the process of going to AP Central and helping you find these documents so that you will have them on your computer or you can bookmark the site so you'll know exactly how to get to them and um, how to use them. So right now I'm going to close PowerPoint and I'm going to switch over to a web browser. So if you can open up a web browser, 
let's see. And I'm going to use Google Chrome. And I want you to um, type in the word a AP Central. So once you type that word in, then hit return and complete your search. Once you type in AP Central, it's going to bring up um, a list of things, but the only thing that I want you to concentrate on, on is clicking on the AP Course and Exam link. So let's go ahead and click on that link. My computer's loading a little slow right now. And I just lost my web browser. Hold on a second. Get that back. All right, there we go. So once you click on this page, uh, this link, it brings up this, this page. And what I need you to do is click on the portfolio that we're currently talking about. And that is Art 2D, um, AP Art 2D and Design. So when you click on that link, it then takes you a little further in, and then you will see that you are the focus of this page, particular page is Art2D, uh, Art2D, AP Art2D and Design. Uh, the other portfolios are listed as well, but this is the one we want to focus on. Um, next, right off to the left, this left panel that's labeled document has one of the important documents that we need. I noticed that it is not only on this page, it's on several pages, but this is the one I'm going to guide you through um, downloading. And so um, what you simply have to do is either click on this little icon or click on this icon. It doesn't matter. You can even click on the, the words. So let's click there. And once we click, it will automatically um, open a, in a new tab the art and design course and exam description. This document is extremely important. It has the framework for the course, instructional um, information, and uh, exam information. And I'm not going to scroll too fast, but later on we're going to go to a particular page and you'll see the information that we need. But for right now, we just need this document. Okay. We're going to also download the rubric. So what I want you to do is go back a tab and this time I want you to click on the word, the portfolio. When you click on the word, the portfolio, it will then bring up a new window or a new tab. And this particular window has a little black, a blue box that says important updates. And the only thing that we really want from this box right now is right here near the bottom, it says updated rubrics. This can be found somewhere else as well, but this is just an easy way for me to, to direct you to this particular information. Matter of fact, it says it right here as well. So it's kind of repeated. And this is the CED as well. So it's everywhere. So if you could please click on the updated rubric, and then all of a sudden, now you have two windows or two tabs. One has the rubric, and one has the course um, and exam description, or the CED. These two documents you need to download. You can hit this download button to your computer so that you have your own copy, so you won't have to always be online when you're accessing it. Um, and it will hopefully, um, you can highlight it, it becomes your copy and you don't have to worry about, or if you can book, or if you want to bookmark it, you can. Okay, so I'm going to hit the download button and you can save it. I'll just let it go directly into a folder that I have related to AP Art, so I won't have to worry about, here's a, I already have a copy, but I'm going to replace it just for, to show you that you save the copy. Now that is my physical copy that I can go and open at any time when I'm not online. Okay, so let's switch back over to our PowerPoint and those two documents we have open and we are using, we'll be using them more a little bit later. Okay, so let's go back to our PowerPoint. And so this PowerPoint is at a point where it was shown. Downloaded the rubric, which is here, and the rubric is the white one. And uh, now we're ready to go on. Okay, 
So great job. We now have those two important documents and there are also other resources that are available to us online and examples of that will be um, used later. Student samples, very important to go online to look at some of the work that students um, have submitted in the past and see how they were assessed. The, the commentary is there for you and we're gonna get a chance to do that uh, a little later. All right. Uh, and of course, guided by questions, we should you should be able to skillfully synthesize materials, processes, and ideas, and articulate in writing information about your artwork. The AP Art and Design Framework is composed of uh, core skills, and what you are seeing on the screen right now can be found in the AP Art and Design course and exam description document, the CED that we just downloaded. So you shall, you will now be able to go to page 12 and you will see exactly what I have on the screen here. And what we're going to do at um, a couple of examples uh, of inquiry and investigation and samples sustained investigations. So if you notice, uh, each of the three skills category consists of skills that are fundamental to advanced learning over a span of the, co of the course. So course skill one is inquiry and investigation. Course skill two is making through practice, experimentation and revision. And course skill three is communication and reflection. And you will be required to develop practice and apply these skills in a variety of contexts. The virtual lesson today will focus on core skills one and two. So let's start with core skill one, which deals with inquiry and investigation. In this skill, you will investigate materials, processes, and ideas. One A states that you will generate uh, possibilities for investigation and 1B, you will describe a career guides investigation through art and design. As we progress through our virtual lesson, uh, remember to think about where you are right now in your portfolio and what you'll need to do to move forward um, to build your portfolio. Uh, we're going to talk about your materials later and the inquiry as well. So let's review some information concerning the sustained investigation. Let's start with some definitions of commonly used terms. Uh, remember, all of the definitions can be found in the rubric, rubrics document we just downloaded. So I'm going to quickly go over and show you that uh, it's part of the portfolio so that you, part of the rubric with the definition so you'll know where it is. So I'm going to close this quickly. And I'm going to rubric, and I'm going to slowly scroll. I was told that if I scroll fast, we would all have issues, so we'll scroll slowly. And each of the um, categories are listed, the selected works. However, right now we're talking about the um, sustained investigation, and it talks about how you will be scored. This is how the AP readers assess your work that you send in digitally. So this is very important for you to understand how this rubric works. With the selected works, there's a set of definitions. I'm still moving slowly. And now we're at this section labeled sustained investigation. And that's what we're talking about right now. So again, this is no longer correct. This is, you will be submitting 10, 10 works instead of 15. Um, everything else that's listed here is correct. Now, as we move along, this is the rubric. Okay, so uh, there will be sessions, I'm sure, uh, more detail of how you uh, use the rubric, but it's fairly self-explanatory. 
um, but we're going to keep going because I just want to show you the terminology. Okay, so here are the commonly used words um, and the definitions. So basically the definitions that are the words that are within the um, CED um, and you need clarity on what those are, they are defined here for you. Uh, so right now we're talking about a sustained investigation and the definition is clearly explained here. We're going to talk about inquiry and so on and so forth. All right, while I'm on the internet or I'm in this in these tabs, I'm going to just quickly go over to the uh, framework and I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you the core skills and that should be on page 12. I'm going to see if I can go a little faster to get to page 12. Uh, and I just want to make sure you understand that you can find those here. You don't have to always pull up the PowerPoint or whatever, the course framework. Okay, so here we are. So page 12 highlights the skills that you need to know. So here are our, the three course skills, and then here are the 15 uh, skills that you will have to ex execute over um, the course, um, the time that you're in the course. All right, so we're going to go back to the PowerPoint. And basically, we're just going to go over the terminology. Uh, and now you know where the definitions are. are um, but, uh, so again, let's talk a little bit about the sustained investigation. It is an inquiry-based is inquiry-based and in-depth study of materials, processes, and ideas over time. And keep in mind, the materials are the physical substance used to make works of art and design. And the materials are limitless. You can use just about anything. And we'll talk about materials a little bit later, uh, especially those that you may have at home uh, that you may be able to pick up from a store uh, if you're able. Um, but any material can be used uh, to complete your 2D design portfolio. And then processes. Processes. Uh, is defined as physical and conceptual activities involved with making works of art. Your, your idea can be uh, virtual. It does not have to be real. So the, how you approach your process is limitless as well. Um, and next is ideas. They're the concepts used to make works of art and design that can be evident visually and in writing. So your ideas, again, are limitless. And the next word is inquiry. It is, a, it is the process of asking questions uh, in order to seek, to search, and to discover. Remember, your questions can be uh, as simple as who, what, where, when, or what if, or why not. Um, your questions can really help guide your investigation. Uh, and in, point, in some point in time, you can develop a question or come up with a question and an answer to your um, sustained investigation that you may not like the results, but you are then allowed to write about that and how you have overcome that or changed that or you've, you've um, decided to just deal with it. You, you just get a, a chance to really write about what you are trying to uh, convey through your artwork. So it's an amazing opportunity for you to express yourself. Hopefully at this point in the portfolio, you have already developed a sustained investigation or come up with a, a set of guiding questions. Um, but if you have not, it's okay. And you can revise your questions. A lot of people um, may revise their questions due to what's going on right now in the world. Uh, so we're gonna talk a little bit about that. And there are two questions that you will have to answer. Question one will have to identify the inquiry or the questions that guided your sustained investigation. Question number two, you will have to describe how your sustained investigation shows evidence of practice, experimentation, and revision guided by your questions or in inquiry. The sample written evidence um, that is shown in the space on the slide is from the AP Central website. Remember, I said there are examples of works by students that you can go look at, and they, the works have been scored, so you can actually see what the reader the the reader uh, saw in the work the the written work. 
uh, that was good. And that's going to be a little exercise that we're going to do uh, a little bit later. For your written response, responses to these prompts are evaluated along with the images that you submit. So you will be assessed uh, based on your writing as well as the works of art. The most successful responses in terms of assessment are those that are clearly related to the images that you submit. Um, you also want to make sure that you provide evidence of inquiry based on the sustained investigation through practice, experimentation, and revision. And you are allowed to refer to slide numbers. So you may have uh, something that you would like to speak about in more detail on slide number two. Maybe that you use a special material there, or that's where your transition happened or your transformation. So you can say slide two was a pivotal, the work, artwork in slide two was a pivotal moment in my portfolio. And so you can speak directly to that in your work. Uh, if you look at the example um, on the screen, it says, uh, second paragraph, my concentration begins by exploring the literal shapes and patterns of the thobe as seen in pieces number one through three. So they are very specific about which slides they want the assessor to look at or the reader to look at when they're assessing their portfolio. Make sure that they're guiding where they're looking. All right. So when coming up with your sustained investigation, uh, and some of you may have already come up with one, but if you're still struggling a little bit or unsure, um, try to center your sustained investigation around an experience. Your experience can be an event or an occurrence. Um, an event is something that happens. It has an end result. And occurrence is, is the actual instance or an occasion or an affair. And your experience can be fictional. It could be totally just, you know, um, something you've come up with in your imagination, a, a, another world. And um, it is limitless, again, with what you can do for your sustained investigation. You just have to support it with your works of art and with your writing. So we're going to look at some sample portfolios on the AP Central website. And let's see if we can determine if um, their experience is an event or an occurrence, and if it is an actual or fictional uh, work. So I'm going to try to guide you again to the AP website, AP Central, and we're going to try to pull up some sample portfolios. There's some really good sample portfolios for the 2D design portfolio that you can look at right now. So um, basically, I'm going to ask you to go back to AP Central. We're going to click on the portfolio tab, and we're going to scroll halfway down, and we're going to find this link right here that says 2D sustained investigation samples and scoring commentary. So let's go ahead and switch back over to the website. I believe I have my tab open still. So if your tab's still open, that's great. So you should already, you should be able to just scroll down because here's, if your tab isn't open, here's the portfolio tab that I referred to. And when you click on that portfolio tab, it lets you know right here, first of all, this is important. Here's um, the tab letting you know you are still in AP 2D art and design. And take you there. Um, this is uh, talking a little bit about the updates, even though this is actually um, not correct. But we already know what the correct works number of works are. And here's where we uh, would like for you to click. So the sustained investigation samples and scoring commentary. If you click on that tab, it should uh, load There we go, a PDF with student samples. There are eight samples on the website. If you click on one, it will show you thumbnails of the student's work plus 
information that the student typed in about each of the pieces or some of the pieces. At the end of that set of works by that student, now after the 15th work, so there's number 15, now there's commentary that the, there's, uh, I'm sorry, written evidence that the student has um, submitted that goes along with their artwork. So here's your chance to explain what the artwork is about. So remember, you have to um, make sure your questions are answered, um, make sure that you uh, speak to your materials, your process, and your ideas. And see, this particular artist starts off by saying, the central idea of my sustained investigation surrounds the question, what does it mean to be black? So again, the question is being asked immediately. To answer his question, I asked my subjects to write me a paragraph. So here he has the people who he's photographing, interacting, giving him feedback, and he's gonna go from there. Another example of listing, here the artist listed works um, that they wanted us to refer back to when we were assessing the work to make sure we have, a, we have a clear understanding of which pieces he's talking about. After this section, there's something called a scoring commentary. That means a reader has scored this portfolio. They have assessed this portfolio based on the rubric that we downloaded earlier. And using the rubric, the highest score you can get for inquiry is a three. So this student successfully um, achieved a three because he or she, I don't know if it's he or she, answered the, um, or wrote enough information to help guide the reader through what he was trying, or she was trying to get across in their works of art. And they talked about their uh, process, they talked about their um, the, their questions and they provided evidence. They some, Somewhere in here, um, this is the next section, they talked about their practice, experimentation, and revision. Again, we're just going to talk basically about the sustained investigation. So, and inquiry that guides the sustained investigation. So anyway, um, we're going to do a little exercise and you're going to get to use these samples for the exercise that we're about to embark upon. So I just wanted to make sure you knew how to get there. So we're going to go back to our screen and scroll back up to the top. We'll have to come back. All right. So in the exercise that we're going to do in a few minutes, I'm going to ask you to go to sample eight. So what you'll do is you'll come back to the website, you'll click on sample eight, and then you'll see the artwork and you'll see the student's written um, evidence. And then you will see um, also the commentary that was written, the scoring commentary was, that was written by the reader to give you an idea of why that student scored what they scored. So let's go ahead and go back to the PowerPoint so that we can move to the exercise. Okay, so we now know how to get to the sample student works that have the scoring commentary along with it. So our exercise that we're going to um, embark upon will consist of you um, clicking on the samples. So the first sample I'm asking you to click on is sample eight. And in this exercise, you're gonna read over the student written evidence. Once you read over that evidence, then you are going to try to determine if this is an event or an occurrence. You are going to, on a piece of paper, list at least two factors that help you come to this conclusion. So again, you're going to, and I've already pasted in that commentary. So it's just this information that's right here. Hold on a second, sorry this information that's right here, but I would, I would rather you, uh, because you know how to get to it, go there, take your time, um, look it over, and find out after reading it, um, is this an occurrence or is this an event? And find out what, um, what you feel the artist was trying to convey in their writing and see if that matches what uh, the work that was submitted along with it. All right, so I'm going to give you an opportunity to do that as well as repeat this assignment with at least four 
other sample portfolios. So this is an, off, uh, an exercise that we're going to do offline. And just to get you uh, thinking about what you're looking, you know, to clearly think about the sustained investigation and look at other students' works that have clear sustained investigations, maybe not so clear. You know, according to the, the um, scoring commentary, you'll find out what the reader uh, saw or did not see, which will be very helpful for you as well. And again, um, I'm going to ask you to finish up. portfolio. We looked at the course skills and how you're being assessed. We downloaded two important documents that you're going to need, the CED, as well as the scoring rubrics. And then we talked about um, continuing and developing your sustained investigation. Again, you may already have one or you may need to develop one or you may need to redevelop the one you currently have. So please look over that assignment. Uh, visit the website, look at the sample art, figure out what's going on in their, uh, their written commentary for their sustained investigation uh, to help guide you as you make your journey through your sustained investigation in your portfolio. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you back again.